Am I going out too? Yep. Come with us. We're here at the Bellamy Cave Refuge in, in Montgomery County. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna catch the bats emerging from the cave using these harp traps here. So the bats will actually fly in from one side and they'll actually attempt to avoid this first strand. Um, some can see it, some can echolocate these strands. And as they turn sideways, they'll try to attempt to fly to the other side. They'll hit these right here with their wings. They'll fall down. Our typical methods we use to catch bats like mist nets, it's not something we can use here because there's so many bats that exit this cave uh, each night in the summertime that we couldn't process the bats and get them out of the net quick enough and that would do more harm than good. So we use the harp trap. We catch them safely. If we don't get them out in time, then they can actually roost inside the trap. 17.5. And then we're gonna weigh them. It's gonna be a non-reproductive female. Assess the reproductive nature of the bats. Look for wing damage uh, from white nose syndrome and then put a band on them, which we can use to track the bats if they're ever recaptured in our life. We've been very fortunate here in Tennessee. We, we've got a, several projects where we work with threatened or endangered bats and, and get, to, get to chase them uh, with our cars and contractor planes. And here we get to, to band them real quick. It's a lot of work in a short period of time. And, but it, you know, over, over the course of a couple of years, the work pays off when we start seeing our bands popping up at various places across the range. Yep. Mm -hmm. We try to get as many people as possible. Since we're working with an endangered species, uh, we can't hold them for very long. Uh, the longer you hold them, the more stress it puts on the animal. So we get as many people up here to get the animals uh, captured out of the trap, in a bag, processed and let go in as short a period as possible. We've actually been banding here for several years uh, to try to get as many bands out. A colony this size, we can't capture every, every bat to band them. Uh, so we use this one, one night each year to get as many bands out as we can and hopefully track them through time. Uh, basically with the band recovery, we're getting a, a straight line uh, recovery from where it was banded at to where it was recovered at. And at this site, uh, a lot of these bats here get recaptured or we recapture bats that use the Fort Campbell area. Uh, but we've also recovered bats from as far away as Shawnee National Forest in Illinois. And these bats have been recovered as far south as Fern Cave in, in Alabama. So we get a, a, a movement pattern across a very large uh, part of the, the range of the species. Female, juvenile, non-reproductive, zero. There's both a maternity colony and a bachelor, so they segregate in the cave. The females will use a uh, different section of the cave from the, from the males, so we'll get a sex ratio of the actual colony. Um, how many of them are the females are have given birth this late in the year, they should have already given birth, so we'll be able to assess if, if they were pregnant um, or if they're lactating. Um, then we'll be able to see if there's any impacts potentially from white nose syndrome uh, since it is in this cave in the wintertime. Here at this site, we're hoping that we, we continue to see the, the positive results or positive uh, things we've been seeing with gray bats. Gray bats have, have not had the declining numbers as with uh, other species of cave bats in Tennessee. So by doing this, we can assess the wing damage, which tells us possibly if they're getting a, a, a pretty bad or significant infection in the wintertime from the fungus. Um, so if we do this work, it gives us that snapshot. So we're, we're hoping that, that we continue to see the good things we've seen here at Bellamy Cave. There's a, there's a lot of research going on with a lot of uh, fungal communities that, that exist on, on different uh, animal skins, particularly bats, because some species don't seem to be susceptible to white nose syndrome, and it's there's a possibility that it could be because of those uh, bacteria and fungi that grow on the bat skin. And, and one of those species is gray bats. And, and hopefully we'll be able to um, fund some of that research in the future to see if, if possibly the fungi and bacteria grow on our bats is different than other bats and, and possibly lead to, to some form of control or uh, explain, at least at the very least, explain why bats, the gray bats here aren't succumbing to white syndrome.